and gentlemen, it's your boy Jesus. Welcome back to another Meta 25 Online Ranked Match. And today, we have the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, anytime you go up against the Seahawks, you generally want to have, you know, a, a good game plan. Because they're arguably the best team in the game. So, um, I definitely liked... The team I had heading into the matchup, you know, anytime I have a team that has a dominant running back going up against the Seahawks is, you know, a, a team where I like my chances, you know, because obviously with Jamal Charles, you want to be able to run the ball, keep the ball on the ground and have success through him. And, you know, if I could avoid those monstrous defensive uh, cornerbacks that the Seahawks got the better my opportunity should be of being able to win. So, of course, first play of the game, we give it to my main man, JC. Just trying to be successful on the ground, man. If we're going to have any chance of winning this game, we got to be effective on the ground and open up the pass. But, you know, if we can keep the ball on the ground at all times, let's go on ahead and do that. So, uh, right here, we run the ball, but we get stopped, and it's third and long. And right here, we had the skinny over the middle, but I didn't click on to a, about a full second after I threw the ball. That right there definitely messed up the user catching right there. And, uh, yeah, just a failed drive. <laughs> um, fourth down was a no-go. He catches us first play uh, with a comeback route, and then he uh, does a nice little 2080 in the air uh, as a celebration as he goes up 7-0. So, that's like, okay, we're already down one possession. Hopefully, we can just go on ahead and somehow get that possession back. You know, the, the Seahawks have such a monstrous offensive, um, you know, running back themselves. But, you know, I, I feel eventually, you know, um, you know, we could probably force a mistake or two. The Chiefs got themselves a very, very, very good defense. But, you know, the when, when you think of the Seahawks, you think of their, their monstrosity of a defense that they have. I'm talking about Sherman and Browner and Wagner and uh, Chancellor. And th their team is just absolutely stacked you know two good safeties two good corners you know good pass rush as um you know we tied the game with uh seven seven and uh he's somebody who no huddles every single play and uh again i just feel like that's that goes against you when you consistently no huddle no huddle no huddle no huddle no huddle one you're at you're at the risk of fumbling because your guys are you know extra fatigued out there and you know two uh, uh, it just makes it uh, easier for me to pick up, you know, on your offense because, you know, you're continuously, especially, you know, him, like he did the same play over and over right here. I wanted to throw something out of the window. We catch an interception. It's a bimbo. And he recovers. And it's now first down from him. And I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding me? We stop him. We get the ball. And we fumble on the interception return. Ah, man. Frustration level 1,000. 1,000 because you know for me stops don't come that easy you know what I mean I definitely feel like I work hard for each and every single defensive stop and then to just give the ball right back oh man I was extremely frustrated now he's starting to pound the ball a little bit with Marshawn um you know he, he generally has the the sample he'll come out like in a you know four receiver set then he'll motion out his running back and um you know he has a slant over the middle with his tight end and uh you know, just a couple routes over the middle, and I feel like, you know, no huddling, I've already seen, like, it's only been a corner, but I've already seen damn near everything he has to offer. You know what I mean? I've seen almost every offensive play he likes to run. So that's why I personally stay away from no huddling. It's just, you know, for the fact that uh, I, I don't want to continuously show everything. You know, I, I want to take my time, baby. Take my time. But, you know, no huddling is, I've no huddled. This is the first Madden, actually, where I've ran a non-no huddle offense. I've usually always no huddle, no huddle, no huddle, because you want to keep the defense on their toes. And, you know, it, it can't be tough stopping a no huddle offense. But this is actually the first year I've gone away from it. And I, I think I've been benefited from it you know just taking my time going back into the huddle you know even if i'm going to select the exact same place still going to the huddle you know take your time and uh i think it's it's uh, benefited me a lot right here we go to the read option with smith and he tries to let a score right there but we decide to slide down you know he, he uh, wants the ball back you know before halftime and and i'm definitely a little weary of that because he does get ball at halftime so 
All right, you see, he backs everybody up. He's trying to let me score. I decide to just get tackled on the one yard line. Uh, he wastes another timeout, and then uh, he decides to do the same play, let me score. So right now, I'm I'm definitely worried because he can score here. He gets ball at halftime, score again. Now I'm down 28 to 14, and that right there will be a tough situation to uh, try and and come back from. So right now, we're just hoping for a mistake. Right there, he does right over the middle. I'm sorry, son, but most of you, give it to me, baby. That right there was a huge interception. That right there gave us the ball in great field position. You know, uh, what he was doing with the tight end is I would lurk the slant, so he would put him on a streak. So I, I would inch my safety up closer to try and bite on that streak just in case he put him on a streak and not a slant. That's exactly what happened. Uh, right here, man, we tried to go to the back of the end zone on a fade, but... When your cornerbacks are 6'8", like the Seahawks, that's very tough to get on him. Browner just snags it down. But the very next play, he goes over the middle. And another interception, two-piece. That right there was, was huge because it still gives us an opportunity to score. We really quickly go over the middle. We call a timeout, and we kick a fail goal. So we do go into the half up three. Uh, definitely could have been worse, you know, because he had ball. And he was looking at being able to score and getting ball back. But thankfully, that was not the scenario. So, 17 to 14. Again, we're back again on defense. And um, we're just trying to pay attention to his his routes that he got over the middle. Right there. Don't test the user. He is so disrespectful, though. Uh, figured he was looking at the tight end all game. So, I manually grabbed the the safety which i never do and uh we came down and he was looking for that streak with just a quick bullet pass and we end up snagging it for uh, another interception so that's big so we can score here go up two possessions that's exactly what it is we do we end up going for the read option and alex smith holds on to it we go into the end zone 24 to 14 and right now we definitely feel confident you know now it's up to our offense to win us the game no matter what happens here right now you know, uh, as long as he scores, doesn't, you know, technically matter. As long as we continue to put points on the board every time we touch the ball, there's no way he can win. So, um, love being in this position. Love being up two possessions where now uh, I can be more relaxed on defense. You know, if I give up a big play or whatever, I'm not upset at myself or calling myself stupid, which I do on the regular when I'm playing defense. Dropped the interception right there. Definitely feel like I should have had that. Very next play, quick slant over the middle, and uh, he gets himself first down. Usually, 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 the Madden guys um, kind of uh, don't allow a, you know, dropped interception to turn into something still for the defense. So, of course, we give up a touchdown that drive. Uh, he, he goes for two just for absolutely no reason. Uh, he was going to go for an outside. I'm like, you know, we're not having that. We'll just call a timeout. You're not going to try and catch me off guard. Uh, no idea why he went for two there. That right there, uh, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I understand that if he got it, it would be 22 to 24. A field goal would give him the lead. But on the flip side, he didn't get it. So now a field goal, instead of, you know, putting me up six, which it would be if he took the PAT, now keeps me up a full touchdown. So I think that right there definitely hurts him, you know, at the end of the day. So. Uh, right here, we go for a read option. We hand it off and we get ourselves another first down. You know, field goal puts us up a full touchdown. So, um, we're fine with that. If the, if the situation calls for it, we will kick a field goal and uh, keep up, you know, a one touchdown lead. But, of course, we want to get in that end zone. So, really quick play over the middle right here. We got ourselves a manageable third and fourth situation. Let's see if we can pick up the first down. We called the wide receiver screen, but he called man-to-man -man for, like, the first time all game. So, we just go to a really quick corner route, which we end up nailing, and uh, we just fall down. We take it down to the fourth quarter. Uh, right here, we run up the middle with the fullback dive, get stopped on the one-yard line. Um, he's, he's out of all of his timeouts. He wasted his timeouts. Uh, I believe one was, like, on a challenge. Uh, another one was uh, on that last drive. He called the timeout a little bit before the fourth quarter to stop the clock. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I, you know, timeouts are so important in the second half. So he's definitely at a disadvantage being down multiple possessions and not having those timeouts. And it's a football, And we recover it. And we are up 11. A field goal puts us up 14. Or let's see if we can go out there and score. Alex Smith is out for the remainder of the game. He got hurt on that QB sneak touchdown. And uh, he's out for the rest of the game. But our replacement does a great run. Quick fullback dive. And we are now up 18. And now I feel like this game is over. Uh, he hasn't really, besides me making, uh, you know, 
couple mistakes the first drive. Uh, we've been really successful offensively. We've been able to run the ball. We've been able to pass the ball pretty well. Uh, haven't passed the ball too much, but uh, the few times I have, we've been pretty successful. Right there, he scores a touchdown. It's still like, you know what, uh, it's still no big worry. Uh, he should come out. He goes for two and doesn't get it again. So uh, he should come out. And an onside, which he uh, did. He come out and squib, try to, you know, but we know how to uh, make sure we grab that. So that's what we do. All we really got to do right here is just kill some time, stay in bounds. And uh, right there, definitely a bad play on my part. You got to stay in bounds. Uh, third and uh, two right here. See if we can pick up the first down. We back up and we do right over the middle, the angle route with the tight end. And right now, since he doesn't have any timeouts, we just get to kill the clock and we get to... Uh, just keep the ball on the ground. Keep the clock rolling. So, uh, then this happened. <laughs> we fumbled. And I kind of, uh, whatever reason, I called a wildcat play. I, I don't know why. I, I really don't. But I figured, you know, let's just, let's just call a run play. Keep the ball on the ground. And I do that. And Jamal Charles fumbles, which, of course, he recovers. And now I'm thinking to myself, all right, uh, as long as we get an onside, there's nothing he can do. This is where if he had those timeouts, he would have been good. But since he wasted them, now there's nothing he can do to stop the clock. Uh, he goes for two again, and he doesn't get it. So he missed out on three points. Uh, right here, he goes for the onside. We recover. So we just kill the clock. Like I said, no timeouts. There's nothing you can do. And we end up barely winning, but a victory is a victory. Like the great Vin Diesel once said, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or you win by a mile. Winning is winning. It's an ugly victory, but we come up with the W at the end of the day. So that's the end of the game, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We do come away with 11 points. So he's ranked somewhere in the top, I don't know, thousand somewhere. Um, he definitely played a different style of, you know, wasting all those timeouts. And I don't know, he played a little awkwardly. But uh, nonetheless, we end up winning. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the game. It's your boy GS, and we are out. Peace.